Good morning. Good Thursday morning. Happy 4th of July. Good Thursday, 4th of July. Come on, come on. Where's Riders of Faith? Riders of Faith. Okay. Okay. There's Riders of Faith. And there's Community Church Services and Announcements. Oh, there we go. And there's Ronnie. Good morning, Ronnie. Oh, how's Ronnie and Juanita doing this morning? Brother Dan. Good morning, good morning. Hope everybody's well and happy. Yeah, hey, it's Thursday morning. It's Independence Day. We're going to celebrate freedom today. We're going to celebrate freedom, and what better way to celebrate freedom than with practicing what we preach and getting into the Word of God this morning and and practicing the freedoms that we've been given to worship the Lord. There's a couple of different spots here I want to look at this morning. So if you want to get your Bible out, we'll say hello to Miss Catherine and Bonnie Booth. Hope you guys are good this morning, too. I tell you. It's what a blessing it is to be able to get up every day, sit down here on this stool, turn on this old camera, even when Facebook don't want to work with me and makes it hard to get through to it, but you know, we always figure out a way to get around them. It's always a blessing to get to, to share the word of God every morning with you guys. There's Melissa, Melissa Gravely from over, over there in Sparta. Good good morning. Good 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 morning to you. Oh mercy. I've got a couple verses here from two different spots that I wanted to share this morning. The first one is from John chapter eight. We're gonna look at verse number thirty two. So if you want to grab that one and then you can mark Second Corinthians chapter number three. We're gonna look at verse seventeen. We're going to start in John chapter 8, verse 32, and then we'll jump over to 2 Corinthians 3.17. And I'll give you a second to find John 8.32. And then I'll give you another second to find Corinthians 3.17 and put your finger or a bookmark or a piece of paper. Uh... What else could you use? <laughs> oh, just anything flat. En envelope, as my gran granny used to say. She didn't say envelope. She said envelope. envelope. One of them envelopes out of the box over there, young. Oh, mercy. Oh, Catherine done knows. <laughs> Catherine done knows. <laughs> You're ahead of us, ain't you? You know, we talk about independence. And we talk about freedom. But there's only one way to truly be free. There's only one way to truly be free. So we'll start here at verse uh, number 32 in John chapter 8. And then we're going to jump over to 2 Corinthians 3. 3.17. We talk about freedom and we talk about liberty. Liberty and justice for all. That's in our pledge. There's a lot of people don't even know that Pledge of, of Allegiance even exists anymore. There's a lot of kids that don't, the only time they ever hear it is when they go to Bible school. Now you think about that. They used to, well, I remember we started every day, kindergarten, first grade up, I can't remember when we actually stopped doing it, but I remember at elementary school, we pledged allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, one republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now you think about them words, what that says. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, one nation under God. When we were one nation under God, we were indivisible. I think if this old country would uh, turn its back on the sin that they've they've engulfed and embraced and loved so good, 
and turn back to God, we'd be indivisible, indivisible again. There wouldn't be all this corruption and fighting over who's going to sit in the White House. And people would work together for the good of the nation, not for the for the evil that they're trying to support these days. They've, they've turned everything around just like the Bible said. Woe unto the man. Woe unto them that call good evil and evil good. But that's, you know, that's where we're at in this day and time. But there are those of us who, who know the truth. And they can never take our freedom from us because we know the truth. You know, it doesn't matter if you're in China. If you know the truth, you're free. If you're in Africa, if you know the truth, you're free. If you're in England, if you know the truth, you're free. Because, well, I'm just going to read. I'm going to read a little further down than just 32, I guess. <laughs> but we're starting here at John chapter 8. We're going to start here at verse number 32. I'll probably read through 36 there because just because. And then we'll jump on over to 2 Corinthians chapter number four, 3, verse number 17. But starting here at John, John 8, verse number 32. John 8, 32, the Bible says, and it's Jesus speaking. Red letters. Oh. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's seed. And we were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And if the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. <laughs> then you jump over here to 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liber liberty. What is liberty? Liberty is freedom. Liberty is freedom. <clears throat> and you and you shall know the truth and the truth shall shall make you free it's the only thing that can make us free and he who the son sets free is free indeed and wherever the spirit of the lord is there's liberty and we've done said liberty means freedom i tell you what y'all it don't matter how bound down this earth thinks they can make the Christian people. We're still free. We're free to tell anybody and everybody about Jesus. We're free to share the word of God with anybody we see. It doesn't matter what laws they pass. You're free. You're free. They, they can't stop you from telling the world about Jesus. I don't care what anybody tries to tell you. I don't care how many people get offended by it. They need to be offended by it. If it offends them, that, that it means they're, they're under conviction. It's convicting their heart. It's telling them that you know they're, they're seeing the truth. And that, that's, that's something that needs to happen. That, that truth delivered out of love. That's what sets us free is the love of Jesus. And the most beautiful part of it, it all comes from one simple thing. He touches. He touches us. He touches us.
beneath the load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I'm no longer the same. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made. Since I met this blessed Savior, since He cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise Him. I will shout it while He turns. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched. Touch me, oh, he touch me. Oh, the joy that floods my soul—something happened, and now I know. Something happened, and now I know He touched me and made me whole. You know. Turn that reverb off, man. We're shackled. Shackled to sin. To begin with, in life, we, we when we come to know, realize that we are sinners, we become shackled to those sins. But something happens when we come to Jesus. Something happens. He He changes everything. When He touches us, we're made whole. We are made whole. And it's nothing that we did that makes it happen. There's, there's nothing that we could do to get that. We cannot buy that freedom. We cannot earn that freedom. That liberty, we can't get that by no other way than the power of the blood of Jesus. His goodness and mercy. The only way we're going to know freedom and the only way we're going to know liberty to be able to go and do what God has called us to do. No matter what anybody else says or thinks or does, we have that liberty in Christ Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And if He's in you, oh, you've got that liberty walking around in you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week because of His goodness, because of His mercy. And because of the power in the blood. And today we get to celebrate 
our freedom to to speak. You know the the people that left England and they carried that old Geneva Bible across the waters. They were called pilgrims, and they come on a Mayflower. <laughs> Mayflowers, you know, those April showers bring Mayflowers, and Mayflowers, they bring pilgrims. They bring Christians looking for religious freedom to be able to praise and worship and pray and speak and teach Jesus freely. They were leaving oppression because, oh, this, this is so, so interesting. It's just so interesting when you get you get right down to it. They were being told they couldn't. They couldn't. And they came over here for that very reason. And as time went on, England started colonizing this nation. The forefathers started seeing that they were get, being over overly taxed, and they started seeing that their freedoms were getting smaller and smaller, and it was becoming just as it was when they, uh, when their forefathers that came here for freedom, it, it was getting just the, just as bad as it was then, and they uh, they decided to do something about it. So they uh, they decided they's gonna start their own country. They's gonna get rid of the the monarchy, the rule. And they were going to allow us to praise and worship Jesus freely. They wanted us to have a relationship with Jesus. They didn't. <laughs> they didn't want us to have to be oppressed and told how we could worship the Lord. And they didn't want us to be taxed without representation. So you know, there's two reasons that this nation was started. Look around, y'all. Let's celebrate the freedom we got while we got it. Because if you'll notice, history repeats itself when you don't learn from it. And this, this nation evidently didn't re really learn from the fact that you can't turn your back on Jesus. So it's time for us to remind them. It's time for us to get them back to looking towards that the only way we're going to be free is to be free, set by, set free by the Son of. I'm, I hope this is making sense to you. I hope you're seeing what I'm saying, because there's not a man that can set us free. Joe Biden can't do it. Donald Trump can't do it. No one, no man, no man can set you free. The only person that can set you free is Christ Jesus. And it's through His goodness, His mercy, and the power of His blood. And was the cross meant for me That my Savior carried Oh, I've been made free By the mercy of God I'm living proof what the mercy of God can do if you knew me then leave me now turn my whole life upside down took the old and he made Just what the mercy of God can do I'm alive to tell the story How I've overcome By His goodness and mercy And the power of the blood I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done But 
But His goodness and mercy And the power of blood I thought I had deserved To be six feet beneath the earth all the things I've done Voices made than I regret Oh, I'd still be lost Oh, but for the mercy of God I'm alive to tell the story How I've overcome By His goodness and mercy and the power of blood I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done But His goodness and mercy and the power of Was the grave meant for me Where my sin lay buried Now I stand redeemed By the mercy of God It was a grave meant for me That my Savior carried Oh, I've been made free By the mercy of God it Was a grave meant for me Where my sin lay buried by the mercy of God I'm alive to tell the story How I've overcome <laughs> By His goodness and mercy And the power of the blood I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done But His goodness and mercy and the power of the blood And was the cross meant for me that my Savior carried Oh, I've been made free By the mercy of God <clears throat> All right. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth is the Son of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in you shall, oh, and therefore the Son shall make you free. If the Son shall make you free, this, oh, he's the Son of God. Whosoever will believe on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his Son into this world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Oh, what love, what grace, what mercy, what power in the blood of Jesus. The power to set us free. 
to not only set us free, but to keep us free. Because this, the Lord is that spirit. Our Lord is that spirit, and who the spirit, where the spirit is, there is liberty. There will always be freedom where the Lord is. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Oh, glory be to God, there's liberty. Liberty and justice for all. Our Lord and our Savior, our God is a just God. And he's not going to let this go on forever, y'all. He's not going to let this wickedness go on forever. This nation will either repent from it or it'll be judged. I myself have been set free, so I don't have to worry about the judgment. He says, we're not appointed under wrath. If we're one of his children, we're not appointed under wrath. We can walk around in the deepest, darkest pits that they've got around here and still have free, freedom and liberty to speak Jesus, to speak life. Oh, man. You know, Paul, Paul and Silas locked up, bond, bound, chained, feet shackled, sitting in the prison at midnight, singing hymns, <laughs> praising the Lord. And those shackles. And those burdens, they just fell off. The ground shook. All the bonds, all the cell doors, all the chains, all the bindings, everything that had them, had all of them. Bound down. They just fell off. Scared the jailer so bad he was ready to commit suicide. If Paul hadn't spoke up, he probably would have. And that night, that jailer and his whole household got saved and baptized. Glory be to God. The sun set them free, and they were free indeed. And those men in that prison, not a one of them got up to run away. Because they, they were free right where they were. You're free right where you're at. You don't have to get up and run. All you have to do is stand. And walk with Jesus. Hmm. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you are free indeed. You shall be free indeed. Ye shall be free indeed. Free indeed. Nobody can own you. Nobody can shackle you down. Nobody. Nobody. The devil comes around trying to remind you of those things that happened in your past. All you got to do is remind him of his future. And if you don't know how to remind him of that future, go back and read Ezekiel. Go back and read Isaiah. Go back and read Daniel. Go back and read Revelation. The reason I started in the Old Testament because that means you go you're going way back further than even what John wrote. You're getting way back there in history, and he and he will remember that how long ago that was written, because he he knows he knows how long ago that was written, and he knows how long it's been since God told him that you know you're you're where he was bound, what his outcome was going to be that his old head was going to be crushed under the heel of his son the son of mm, the son of the living god was going to crush the devil's head with his heel you might bruise the lord's heel but he's going to step on your head <laughs> you think about that we got no we got nothing to be worried about we got nothing to be fretting over we got nothing at lord help us when we start thinking that we got to worry about this and that Remember what he said in Romans. <laughs> All things work to the good. Of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Are you walking with Jesus? Are you following the calling he has on your life? Are you doing what he would have you to do? If you're doing that, you've got nothing to worry about. 
Everything will work out for the good. Even those things that we, you know, Paul could have been sitting in that prison cell worried to death. No, him and Silas started singing hymns, praising the Lord. Lift, lift, it, lift up the Lord in, that, in all things. Rejoice. And again, I, I rejoice. Be thankful. The Lord's with us. I mean, you look around us, the prices of everything is so outrageous. We, are you going hungry, though? The Lord is providing for you. David said, I was young and now I'm old, but never have I seen the children of the Lord begging bread. Have you noticed? God's children, we're surviving this. We're surviving this. And we're going to continue to survive it, no matter who they set down in the White House in November. It doesn't matter. As long as God is in charge in your heart, as long as you're following after Jesus, as long as you're living Christ-like, it doesn't matter. I pray that you will honestly pray and ask the Lord who you need to mark on that box when you go to vote and let him do the, be the one who votes for you, not you, but allow the Holy Spirit to take, take control of your hand when you get ready to mark a box. And we'll see what, what happens. But it doesn't matter what happens until the whole nation as a whole gets its eyes back on Jesus. Neither one of these men can save us. And the only way that this whole nation is going to get its eyes back on Jesus is for the church to get it right. Ah, I just stepped on a bunch of toes, didn't I? Let's throw out the religion. Let's get the church right. Let's get the church back into a relationship with Jesus. Quit being lukewarm. And that lukewarm don't mean on fire or ice cold. That lukewarm means, see, Laodicea was right in between two cities. And where they were at, there was no water. To the north of them was a city with a hot springs. Hot water was useful. To the south of them was a city with a cold spring. Cold water was useful. But by the time it got to Laodicea, it was lukewarm and they couldn't use it for anything. In other words, be useful hot, be useful cold. Don't be lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. That lukewarm water does nothing for him. Be useful. It's not about how hot you're preaching. It's not about how cold you're sitting on a pew. It's about being useful. It's about getting out and spreading the gospel. It's about being the church, not religious. I heard that preached one time by one preacher. I've heard it preached that way one time by one preacher. And it grabbed a hold of me. Because all my life it was either be hot or be cold. Either sit on that pew or get out and do the, the work of the Lord. But, but uh, don't be a lukewarm Christian. Well, sitting on that pew, you're being a lukewarm Christian. Let's get up and go out and spread the word. Be a cold drink of water for somebody that's a, that's hot and thirsty. Be a warm drink of water. Be a warm cup of soup to somebody that's hungry. Be useful. Don't just sit there on your hands. You warm in the pew, you're lukewarm. Let's get up and get out and spread this gospel. It's the last days, y'all. It's the last days. And this country, the United States, the Christians of the United States, unfortunately, have become that Laodicean church that's going to be spewed out of his mouth if you don't do what he has for us to do. And if that makes you mad, maybe you need to be the one that gets up and goes. Because those of us that are getting up every day and working for the Lord the way he called us to do, we're not going to be offended by that kind of preaching. We're going to take it and run with it because we're already running with it. We're the ones that are preaching it. 
because we don't we are telling you the truth because the truth is the only thing that's going to set you free. Just claiming to be a Christian and warming a pew at church, paying a tithe, paying an offering, that ain't getting you nowhere. It's good that you go and you do that, but you know what? Good works ain't going to get you to heaven. The only people that are going to make it to heaven are those that have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's got to know you. Because he's not like this; these people on this earth. You either know him or you don't know him. You either have an intimate relationship with him or you don't know him. It's not one of these situations where you can say, oh yeah, I know of him. I know who that is. There's a lot of people who know who I am. I know because I, I run into them all the time. But there's very few that I have that relationship with that I can say, I, yeah, I know that person. Know Jesus on an intimate level. Share the the desires of your heart with Jesus. And take the time to hear the desire of his heart. Walk in the power that's been bestowed upon you. That's why John, Peter, Paul had that power that were even when they walked by their shadows healed people. This is because they were that intimate with the with our Lord. Even after his resurrection and his ascension, they were still that intimate with the Lord because they took the time. They made the time on a daily basis. And they could celebrate that mercy. They could celebrate that touch. And they could say, if you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. And if therefore the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's freedom. If you've been made free today, as people are out celebrating Independence Day, let them know who made you free. It's, uh, people are going all over the place going to be out this evening going to watch fireworks. And there's going to be people gathered in a lot of different places to watch the fireworks. Wherever you're at, share Jesus with those around you. Because you know, and I know, that if you're going to go watch the fireworks, you're going to go early to get a good spot. And there's going to be other people that come early to get a good spot. And you're all going to be gathered together in these little groups parked out here and parked there. What a time to get out the old Holy Bible. Dig into the Word of God and share this scripture. Eight, John 8, 31 through 36. 32 through 36. 30, go ahead and do 31 through 36. Read that scripture out loud and look around at those folks and say, do you truly know Jesus? Do you know the truth? Do you know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life? For God sent his son not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Let him know John three seventeen, not just the not just the first part of that context, but the full context. If you got your Bible open, you can just turn right back over to John three sixteen through twenty one and share that right after you share the truth will set you free because right there's the truth. <coughs> Whew, I'm wound up. We're gonna have a good time today at Backstreet Subs. Whew. Oh mercy. We're gonna have a good time today at Backstreet Subs. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to lift him up. We're going to shout his praises. We're going to sing. We're going to sing the praise of Jesus. 
Sing, sing and praise Jesus in the sub shop. I hope it's full. I hope it's a lot of people there. I hope there's people there that just get eat up and set on fire by Jesus Christ today. I want to see him. I want to see him move. I want to see his stirring. I want this. I want what's burning inside of me to catch up on everybody. I want us all to get caught up in this. Because I want us all to be together in heaven. It ain't about me. It's about the one who set me free. I want everybody to know Jesus. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm a shaking all over, y'all. Mm. That's all I got. <laughs> I'm a shaking all over. Ooh, glory. Because if the Son is here for shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. The Son shall make you free. Ye shall be free indeed. Backstreet Subs, 12 to 2. Lunchtime Fellowship on Independence Day. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's freedom. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. I love you guys. Come join us today. Let's keep this thing going. Let's keep this thing a rope. Let's let's run over sin like a like a steamroller. Let's flatten it out and get rid of it. Let's stomp it out. We can start in our corner of the world. We can start right where we're at. Get rid of it. Let's let's show this world that who the sun sets free is free indeed. That we can preach the word of God on the rooftops. We can preach the word of God in the street. We can tell everybody everywhere we go. Jesus is coming. And he loves you so much he died for you. And he didn't stay get dead, and he ain't going to stay gone. He didn't come to condemn you, but to save you. Nip that condemnation in the bud. For there is now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. I love you. God bless you. Have a great day.